Lover Boy. That's the, the new single. Um, and over to my first guest, Nick. Uh, we bumped into each other at the top of the pop stick ring. That was the first time around. So. And uh, I went along to see Nick's exhibition, which is now over in London. That's right. I'm actually going to move it, though. Um, it started at Hamilton Gallery in London on about the, um, the 27th of December and yeah. finished just this week on the 9th. Right. So I'm going to move it, hopefully, more north ways towards sort of Birmingham, Manchester. Yeah. I move, like moving it around. Mm -hmm. um, okay, but when you did... Um, the pictures did you have sort of an exhibition in mind or was it just not like really no the pictures all started um, in America um, when I was actually touring there and I started taking Polaroids um, all the time and I just walked into a room one day and saw this really vivid television screen with like lots of really bright sort of lines on it and uh, I just took a picture of it because I had my camera with me and I was obsessed with it for the next sort of six or seven weeks and so um, it, it became sort of a, I guess, a hobby at first, sort of taking pictures of these screens and everybody thought I was insane. But then eventually it developed into something quite interesting and it became a lot more serious and I put it yeah. out as the book and then the exhibition really followed that. I suppose it's something to keep away the madness of tour in America. Well, there is that. <laughs> Just drive you around the bend. Um, yeah, so you've already explained roughly how they were done, which is what I was going to ask next. But also, in the, in the exhibition, you've got some television screens that are showing different things as well. It's not just Polaroids, is it? It's no, I, I decided to develop it for the exhibition because I think that Polaroids on, on their own are very nice. Um, and it's great to be able to sort of use that format. But somehow I wanted to see them a lot bigger and in lots of different mediums, so I just sort of developed it into something. I mean, we used 60 television monitors, um, which I made a special sort of video, computer video up for, to try and um, recreate some of the distortion and actually yeah. sort of program some of my pictures into it and use computer graphics oh, on them. So they're like superimposed over other Yeah, other over things. other things. We've actually got um, some on the computer, I think, if really? we can have a look at one of the photos. Is it on there? Sue, have you got it? No, it's gone, I'm sure. No, I don't think it's here. <laughs> oh, well. That was there. Yeah, there's one of them. Oh, well, it is the first yeah, night. That wasn't the one I saw earlier. The one they were using uh, in rehearsals was one of my favourites. It's like a really out of focus roller coaster. Oh, they're all out of focus. I haven't learned how to focus it properly. Yeah, yet. but the, <laughs> but the, uh, the colours were really strong. That's the nice thing. Yeah, I think the thing is with, um, with photographs like that, with abstract photographs, that. Um, they, they don't particularly mean that much um, in sort of heavy terms, but they're, they're nice to look at. And there's a lot of different things you can pick out of them, which I think is important to sort of let people's imaginations run yeah. wild. Just Nick, are you, are you going to... Uh, what's this, this up you're doing with, uh, with Simon? What's all that about? Um, well, it's just something that we've been wanting to do for a while. And, uh, You're not going to split Duran Duran up, Oh, you? God, no. No, we're doing another Duran Duran album in, uh, in March. Oh, good. We'll but this is just that. something that Simon and I are doing in uh, January and February, which is a project we've been working on and off for a while. It's and a you're more collecting more hats as well, aren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My hair's taking a mess. It's good. Listen, we've got a copy of your book which you're putting in for some prizes a bit later, yes? Oh, really? Yes. Oh, Splendid, good. if you'll sign that for us. Anyway, more from, uh, more from you a bit later on, OK? OK. That's good. Right, uh, one of the faces you remember from last year is Nick Rowan. Now, what went on in the back of that taxi? Now, if you look around you, you'll see here at the set of our RS85, we've brought all the gear and all the equipment and the people down to show you how it all works. We've got Peter over there, he's the producer, Nobby, he's the DJ, uh, Roger's in charge of the sound, and Sue has the most to watch, and what we've asked is... Watch out for them, destined for big, big things. That's Strawberry Switchblade and their current hit single... On one condition, I want two of my favourite people. One of them has to be Nick Rhodes, and the other is the heroine of his life, and you know what I mean. It's Helen Slater, now better known as Supergirl. We've flown her over at vast expense all the way from New York, and this is a clip of her looking like she's flying over something out of the Lake District. <laughs> Great stuff. And that was Supergirl, and this is Helen Slater here now, not to be confused. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yes, a pleasure to meet you as well. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Yes, you too. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Um, I wanted to ask you 
We won't stay on Supergirl for too long because it's it was how long ago? A year? Almost a year. Since it's been finished. But are you glad it's all sort of over now? Yes, I am. Yeah. I've just come from doing another film, a modern St. Joan story. That's why all my hair's been cut. Yes, that might be the first thing you've noticed, the hair is short, but that was actually part of the script. Yeah, it's to great get it fun. Cut it's about a young rebel with the cause. She leads a this crusade, rebel. yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, I just wondered about um, working on a film like that. That was the first thing you'd ever done outside of performing the art school, arts. isn't it? Yeah, yeah I went to um, high school performing arts and then did that. Yes, it was quite big. Was that, um, was it very daunting to work with other sort of big actors and things like that? Yeah, Peter O'Toole, Faye Dunaway, but they were great. They all yeah. taught me a lot. By the way, the Band-Aid is doing wonderful in America. It's oh, yeah. done great, well, we're and everyone's it. buying it for Christmas presents, and it's really made a difference. That's great. They're buying the videos. The videos out there as well. The videos and the record. And America, thanks all of you for doing it. Actually, Nick was saying it's just up to um, eight. It's around million. eight million, I believe it's raised now. Right. It's wonderful. There's so much work being done to end world yeah. hunger. It's going to happen. <laughs> um, We'll go back to the performing arts school thing because obviously the fame series, that sort of thing. Is it, um, is it as true as the TV series portrays? It seems overblown. But... It is. I mean, TV is going to always blow it out of proportion, but the spirit and the energy, I mean, it's a mesh mutt of everything. Yeah. There's, you know, because you don't have to have money to go to performing arts. You have to audition to get in. So everyone who's there is because they've put their heart into it. When you were going to performing arts school, they're um, telling me we have one minute, do you know that? <laughs> That's all right, then we'll one get minute. it in quick. We'll go to quick, yeah. I'll talk When you were going to perform in art school, what did you do to earn a wage? You said you were doing commercials. Um, yeah, I got commercials, which was able to pay for my not going to college. and uh, Not going to college. Yeah. So tell, tell them the Coke advert. I, I love the Coke. The, oh, the Coke advert is that um, I did a commercial for Coca-Cola, and as I was drinking it, they had me drinking around six or seven times and drink, you know, and then you smile, and they said, again, please, and then you drink, and then you smile, and by the sixth can, you know, I'm drinking, and all of a sudden I threw it up all over the country. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terribly, I'm terribly sorry, Helen, you can't, we can't use you in the Coke commercial. Yeah, you lost it, wasn't. didn't you? You lost I it. I lost it. And what was that Billy Jean story you were telling us before? Oh, yes, the they Michael wanted Jackson. to name the film that I've just finished called The Legend of Billy Jean, but Michael Jackson has copyrighted anything with the word Billy Jean So in don't it. name your kids Billy Jean, because you'll be <laughs> paying Martha Jackson royalties. And if you're into making ads, are you going to make an ad for Paul's next LP? I don't know. He might be doing a song for this film, though, so... Yes, that's possible. Really? Yeah. When do we find out? Well, I'm looking at the script at the moment, oh, and also right. I've got a ton of work on this year, but I'd like to do it. Yes. Nice. Keep the room Helen Slater. Yes. <laughs> Give her a chance. <laughs> Well now, live and direct with his second song and his first hit, a big ORS welcome please to Smiley Culture! Live, live, check, yeah! Every time I drive, me can't police the stop, me superstar, to me drive up the Vietnam. That's all you have to do. Now, the moment you've been waiting for. Been number nine for three weeks, which is the longest any record's ever been at number nine, ever. Well, at least this year. Nick, are you going to introduce him? I don't see why not. Here he is. It's Paul with Everything Must Change. Yeah! 